When you look at the skull from above, you'll notice it usually has an oval shape. The back part, called posteriorly, is wider than the front, known as anteriorly. But sometimes, it might even appear more circular. Now, let's take a peek at the skull from the top, also known as norma verticalis. We can see the upper part of the frontal bone at the front, which is anteriorly, the uppermost part of the occipital bone at the posteriorly, and a parietal bone on each side. Let's discuss the sutures, which are the joints between different bones of the skull. First, we have the coronal suture, placed between the frontal bone and the two parietal bones. It runs across the cranial vault from side to side, moving downwards and forwards. Next is the sagittal suture, positioned in the median plane between the two parietal bones. Then, we find the lambdoid suture at the back, between the occipital bone and the two parietal bones. It runs downwards and forwards across the cranial vault. Lastly, there's the metopic suture, also known as the Latin forehead suture, which is occasionally present in about 3 to 8% of individuals. It lies in the median plane and separates the two halves of the frontal bone. Usually, it fuses by the age of six years. Let's explore some other named features of the skull. The vertex is the highest point along the sagittal suture. The vault of the skull forms an arched roof, giving the skull its dome-like shape. Moving on to the bregma, this is where the coronal and sagittal sutures meet. In fetal skulls, it's also the location of the anterior fontanelle, a membranous gap that allows for brain growth. This fontanelle typically closes around 18 months of age. Next up, we have the lambda, which is the meeting point of the sagittal and lambdoid sutures. In fetal skulls, you'll find the posterior fontanelle here, and it usually closes at around two to three months of age. The parietal tuber or eminence refers to the area of maximum convexity on the parietal bone. Unfortunately, it's also a common site for skull fractures. On each side of the skull, there's a parietal foramen located near the upper border, about 2.5 to 4 centimeters in front of the lambda. These foramina allow an emissary vein from the scalp to enter the superior sagittal sinus. The obelian is simply the point on the sagittal suture that lies between the two parietal foramina. Lastly, the temporal lines start at the zygomatic process of the frontal bone and then arch backward and upward, crossing over the frontal bone, the coronal suture, and the parietal bone. Over the parietal bone, there are two lines, a superior and an inferior one. If you trace them forward, they eventually fuse into a single line. When traced backward, the superior line fades out over the posterior part of the parietal bone, while the inferior temporal line continues downward and forward. So, these named features provide us with valuable information about the various points and lines on the surface of the skull. This is it for the video, let's recap. The exterior of the skull appears oval when viewed from above, with the back being wider than the front sometimes appearing more circular. From the top of norma verticalis, we see the upper part of the frontal bone at the front, which is anteriorly, the uppermost part of the occipital bone at the back, which is posteriorly, and a parietal bone on each side. The sutures, joints between skull bones, include the coronal suture running across the cranial vault from side to side, the sagittal suture positioned in the median plane, the lambdoid suture at the back, and the metopic suture occasionally present in 3 to 8% of individuals, separating the two halves of the frontal bone and fusing by age 6. Other named features include the vertex, forming the highest point along the sagittal suture, and the vault of the skull, giving it a dome-like shape. The bregma is where the coronal and sagittal sutures meet,
with the anterior fontanelle closing around 18 months in fetal skulls. The lambda, the meeting point of sagittal and lambdoid sutures, has the posterior fontanelle closing at two to three months in fetal skulls. The parietal tuber or eminence is the area of maximum convexity on the parietal bone and is prone to skull fractures. Each side of the skull has a parietal foramen near the upper border, allowing an emissary vein to enter the superior sagittal sinus. The obelian marks the point between the two parietal foramina on the sagittal suture. Finally, the temporal lines start at the zygomatic process of the frontal bone, arching backward and upward, crossing the frontal bone, the coronal suture, and the parietal bone. Over the parietal bone, there are two lines, superior and inferior, which fuse into a single line when traced forward, but continue downward and forward when traced backward.